Shabbat Shalom. We are in the third portion of this book of Vajikra. Uh, no, the fourth, I'm, th I'm sorry. The Shemini, the eight, and this is about the eight day. And he's going to talk about the final uh, inauguration of the Ohel Moed, or the Mishkan, by Aaron and his children. And in this, this uh, portion comes something very hard, very difficult. In chapter 10, we are going to learn about the death of the two older sons of Aaron. And the Nadab and Abihud, they are going to be killed immediately by the Creator. The same day that they are doing this wonderful inauguration and they have seen the fire from God coming down to uh, uh, accepting what these people were so enjoying. This is the first time that we see Israel together participating because the first time that we saw together receiving uh, the announcement from the Creator was in Har Sinai, in the mountain. They were now uh, across the, the mountain, they were in the, uh, in the flat area, but they were close to Har Sinai. But at this time, the people of Israel participated. They were not only an audience. They participated. They worked for the, uh, for the Mishkan. They brought the things to, to provide the Mishkan. They built it. They worked together. They, and they finally, they brought all this uh, korbanot, this offerings to the Creator, and they were excited that they were co-participants. The Creator has already forgiven them for the great sin of the Egel Sahab, the Egel Sahab, the golden calf. There was so much excitement. They, and they saw the Creator saying, my children, I am with you, boom! Uh, and they saw something that we had never seen before. Uh, and then we are, uh, and they have not been repeated again. You know, they say that in the time of the, the inauguration of the, the temple, uh, the Beit Midash was by Shlomo HaMelech, uh, King Solomon, also something like that happened. But uh, this was so special for the people of Israel. And after that, very emotional thing. You need to read chapter nine and chapter 10 as one. You know, at the time that was written the Torah, there were no chapters and there were no divisions. Then at uh, some time when you have division, the, no, this is chapter nine and this is chapter 10, you stop in chapter nine and then you start chapter 10 and it's like uh, something else. But uh, it's only a continuation. It's everything happened the same day. Okay? Look at, after so many happenings, um, suddenly the two songs, the oldest song, they go and they present to the Creator what they call it, a, a foreign fire or a non uh, a required fire. You know, the, that fire was not asked by, by the Creator. And they put it on themselves. And they are, you don't have any idea, our sages, they are at least four basic understandings on them, then from those basics, there are like uh, hundreds of different ideas why this happened. And they're trying to explain in the positive way, in the negative way, everything. And instead of getting on that, uh, I, I want to tell you something about all these stories, how can apply to us today, how the Torah really becomes for us today. You have heard in this morning about what Denis has told you and uh, about the, what he's going to teach you about the idea about this mis, I call it a mis, misunderstanding of what they call a progressive revelation. And you're going to see the progressive is nothing. It's only changing understanding and uh, understanding at the time. And this is what I am doing. You know, how we can apply this information for today. This is import that is important. Okay, look at this. In, in this chapter you have, chapter nine is the inauguration. Chapter 10 happened with the, what happened to uh, uh, Nadab and Abihud, how 
Aaron needs to toughen up, and then they have a discussion with, uh, with Moshe Ravenu, and then finally Moshe Ravenu accept the position of Aaron understanding, because the the instructions of God are not to to make a like a you you know a make it of a that you can know see certain situations when they need to be applied certain situations. You know, give you uh, the, the, cap the capability of us as men to make decisions. And then after that, Gams is going to bring us in chapter 11, we are going to be talking about the food that we can eat and what we cannot eat. The, today they call it the cash rule laws. You know, the word kosher doesn't exist there, that word. That word only we find the one time in the whole Tenach in Esther A5. You know, and what do you mean fitting or correct way to do things? And la the question is how we can put Nadab and Behud and the Kashru laws together and what it, how they, they play together. Is there, they have a relationship or not? Let me tell you this. We have been talking about that. The, in, in a religion, religions are systems that they give us rules and regulations, you know, that supposedly are understood from the scriptures. And they make it uh, to, to think uh, you need to do it exactly the way that was given to, to the first one who received it, without any understanding the why. But here in the modern times, you know, you're going to see that there are groups in, in Judaism, especially the ultra, ultra Orthodox, the Hasidim, they, they have different levels of cash root. And among themselves, they, they compete which one is more uh, kosher than the other, what is more closer to God than the other. And among themselves, they even fight. And they want, they don't eat the food of the other. Uh, and, and, and you know, oh, is this name? No, I don't eat this. And, and there is a sense of pride and, and holier than thou, and we are better than, than the others. And that's what the intentions of, of the Creator, the wanted for His people, totally the contrary. You know, it's Yeshua, the very interesting, you know, uh, interchange with the Perushim. He talks about, you know, about the, they are eating this and eating that. And he makes this simple statement. What, is, what contaminates more? You know, what comes into your mouth or what comes out of you, or your, or your, or your, uh, or your mouth? You know, what is the worst contamination? And here is what I, I want to put all together in this understanding what this message is for today. First of all, Nadab and Abihu, the oldest children of Aaron. In Mishlei, almost teach you about that you need to, uh, to educate your children. Teach them how to behave. And a child, and a child who misbehave, it is a sign of shame for the parents. Okay? And, and when a child doesn't behave, if what is telling me know that the child is bad, what is telling me that parents are bad. I don't know if you follow me. Then Michele said that you need to correct your child. Today, we have arrived to the time of enlightenment. And most of the people, they will tell you that you cannot correct your children because if you correct your children, you really limit them as they are grow. You create to them traumas. And you know, and they can never ever develop as, as good citizens, poor children. Then 
You cannot put any boundaries, any, any fence around the child to protect them. And you let the children's wisdom, look at the children's wisdom, decide what is right and what is wrong. Put a child in uh, two plates, one in nice soup and a chicken soup that is good for, you know, and a, 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 a another plate of only dessert and um, sweets. What the child is going to choose? And what are you going to eat? I see it here every Shabbat in, in our... In, I see the plates of the children. What they put. And I ask myself, if that's what they eat all day, poor children. I, I am not here judging any part, by the way. I am only talking in very general terms. Because it is important that you see what is the importance of parenthood and how we are going to go. Our creator is our heavenly father. And he's our father. And he wants the best for us. That's the reason that he gives the rules, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, for us to follow and to understand about our limitations, and to use our head, our knowledge, and our understanding to be wise. But what happens if I, as a parent, I see my child doing something wrong, and I turn my face, and I, and I go to other places, or I allow him to do whatever he wants to do? And that's what is happening right now in this century in in this time of the uh, of the year you know there are now very few homes very few homes they see the parents disciplining their children the child can do whatever they want to do and at the end don't be alarmed if your child becomes a delinquent, why I say that? Because when the child growing up lose the capability to respect the elderly people, the sick and him, to respect people that are older than they are, to respect the teachers, to respect the anything, they, at the end they won't respect even the authorities, and when they're not respecting the authority, what is the ending? The jail. I want to put in jail. There's a reason that now we, we, we are, one area that we are growing all over the world, jails, prisons. We have more prisons than, than uh, hospitals. Can you believe that? And then we have so many people in, in jail that, that we can know, know even now millions all over the world. This is a situation. Because we have lost perspective and, and we have lost perspective from the Torah. And you say, what Nada and Abihud and then the Kosh, the Kashru Lord has to do with this. Listen carefully. I call it pollution. I mentioned to you this before, and I'm going to remind you. You know, we live in a very polluted world. The, the reason the Kashru laws were given to Israel to differentiate Israel with the rest of the people had nothing to do with health issues as many people trying to explain it, has nothing to do that is the proper thing or the improper thing uh, in respect to others or, and this. It is to differentiate Israel from the rest. Let me read to you one passage that sometimes is very difficult to understand. Devarim 14, the same passage you can find it in, in, in Bayikra and you can find it in uh, Shemot, Exodus. But the Barim 14, 
Ok. Twenty. One. Ok. When we look at what it say. You must not eat any animal that has died a natural death. And here, of course, this animal dying naturally is talking about only the kashru, kosher animals. The Moses Ravenu saying this. No? You may give it to the resident foreigner, to the girl, to eat. Or to sell it to the foreigner. But uh, you must not eat it. Because you are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. Simple question. Do we have that, that evil God that he wants to kill the rest of the people? The only thing that here you can bring out is you are a consecrated people. And the, 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 the word is holy. And the problem that we have made holy a theological word instead to understand it for what imply. Because here in chapter 23 in the, in the Barim, two talk about the holy men and the holy woman who are prostitutes and they are a men who, who lay down with men. And they are holy people. What do you mean holy? Holy means separation. To be separated. And we're going to see that this book of Ayikra talks about that separation. Why? Because when you have been called to something special, you are an example. As an example, you need to do your best. There are certain things that are going to separate you from the rest. You're not going to be like the others. And this is what I call a pollution. The food that we eat, okay, is the idea that feeds our souls. No? And we do not need to depend food from the food. We need to depend on a relationship with the Creator. And we need to be different to the others. Look at what is happening right now in this century with the spiritual pollution. Ask this simple question. Two religious people in any other branches or groups about what is doing with this relationship between men and women, or men and men and women and women. Now has been accepted and is normal and is okay. And not only that, but we have been brainwashed to the, to the point that we, the people who believe in the Torah, we have accepted that that's right. And many of us, we say, nothing wrong. What's wrong if two people love each other? What about abortion? Life is sacred. But the woman has more right in her body. And most of us, we have accepted. Let me ask you something. Are we kosher? And this is the point that I try to make to you. The kashru was to avoid the pollution in your soul. The parents didn't do their job to take their children and to teach them what's right and wrong. And when they grew up, they grew up without any elements. And they did whatever they want to do on their own. And we see the consequences. And Mishle in Proverbs very clear say that if you do not help your child to grow up and you do not educate him, you do, you do not 
teach them behaviors. You are destroying the child. You. Because when they're adults, it's too late. Nadang and Bihu, they were adults now. It's too late. And because God was in the greatest moment of the separation from the world and showing to the rest of the world how special they were going to be, he couldn't accept something like that to happen and he needed to cut it from the beginning before that spread. When you have a child and misbehave, and instead to correct the child, you say, oh, what a nice, look at how cute is. Okay? I have seen parents doing that, by the way, in front of my face. Instead to correct the child, <laughs> and they say, oh, how cute it is. And they celebrate the misbehavior in front of everybody. Let me ask you this question. How this child is going to grow up? when they are adults. No boundaries, no limitations, no responsibilities, no respect to anybody. Today, we're living in this world. Sadly enough, I need to tell you something. That now, everything is to the young people. The young people have been put in a pedestal and they cannot do anything wrong. And the elderly people will have been put in the bottom. And the young people are being deceived because they do not understand that wisdom comes through time, through experience. Doesn't come to the moment that you're, when you are young, you think you know everything. And the truth of the matter is that you don't know anything. You can know technical things, but doesn't mean that you have acquired the wisdom, the maturity. And there are very few young people today who have respect for the elderly, for the wisdom of the elderly. That to me is so sad, because this is the basis of our Judaism. Here is star the Moshe, Tel Aaron, and the second in, and the elders. Not to the young people, to the elders. Because they had the wisdom. And when young people start listening to the elders, they grew up in wisdom and in knowledge. Right now, if you are 42 years old, now you are too old now. There are people that in the 50s, they cannot find a job anymore. They give a preference to the young. And they are missing the great capability of wisdom of these people. Why? Because maybe the young person has more technological advance. And they don't care about what the elderly person can give. This is the tragedy that we are living. And this is what uh, is teaching us for today, this portion. The food that we are not allowed to eat is the pollution of the world that is telling us, bombarding us to be socially correct, to be political correct, to be theological correct. Everything is to be correct. Now you cannot say the truth. Because as soon as you say the truth, they call you a bigot. They call you a racist. They call you a, a human, a, a, a monster. When you speak the truth. These people, they're fighting, you know. For example, in Europe right now, and here in Canada, it's very sad. You cannot say the truth. And these people that you allowed, that they are untouchable, what do you do? They, 
They can do whatever they want to do. They ask you for your hand, you give it the hand. They are not satisfied with your hand, they ask you for the arm. You give it the arm, and they are not satisfied with the arm. They ask you all together. And you need to do what they tell you at the end. They are the foreigners, but they tell you what to do. Because they have greater principles and values than you have. And all the people here say, yes, you're right. And then when they see that they are going to, under that oppression, it's going to be too late. Juan Adab and Abihud is teaching us. The problem is not the children. The problem are the parents. The problem is us, the adults. That we have been submit to this oppression and we have accepted because we don't want to be troublemakers. In Spanish we say, we have a saying, el que calla otorga. I don't know if you can understand that in English, but it's basically, if you keep your mouth shut, you are agreeing with the others. Are we here as a community? Because we have been called by the Creator to live a life, a relationship with Him, and a relationship with our neighbors and with everybody. Totally the contrary. We, are, we need to eliminate all hate against each other. We are not putting ourselves holier than thou or better than anybody else. Totally the contrary. We need to humble ourselves before the Creator. We are not better than anybody else. But uh, we need to act accordingly to what is right. The pollution of today, the cash rule that the Creator is asking us to eat today is the moral values that He taught us in the Torah. And instead to eat those moral values, that he has told in the Torah, we has abdicated for the moral values of the world. And we are polluted. And what the Creator does is the work itself. That means we are an abomination to him. We call ourselves Jews. We are called ourselves Torah. Shomer uh, Torah, uh, keepers of the Torah, we call our, our holier than thou, and we are living a life that we are accepting things that are totally contrary to the scriptures. You know? It's like Yeshua say, it's not the food that you eat, because you eat and go to the latrine. But what pollutes you, pollute the word, what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your heart, what is your kavanah, your intention. Then, we are not popular people. And we can never be popular. How, how you know any politician that is popular when they tell you the truth? That's not. Because first of all, nobody wants it. It's somebody who tells them the truth. You know? You, you want everything sugar coating. You want everything to put a, a lot of sugar over to pass the, the bitter pill. And I'm going to tell you, the, bi the bitter pill you need to taste it in order to know how bad it is. Are we willing to stand up for what uh, we are and what uh, we believe? Or oh, this is only a social club 
that it's nice to come once a week to be holier than thou and then come back and to live a life that whoever cares. Because for our Creator, it's not one hour. For our Creator, it's every hour, every second, every moment in our life, He's present with us. Blessed be His name. Shabbat shalom.